Coronaviruses are common in many species of animals, such as camels, cattle, civet cats, and bats. On occasion, the virus strains mutate and spread from animals to humans. This jump was evident in the case of SARS in 2002, in the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, in 2012, and now in the 2019 novel coronavirus. Two of the earliest patients reportedly worked at the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market in Wuhan. The suspected ground zero of the outbreak was also dealing in legal and illegal trade and consumption of exotic wildlife. The cages do not get changed and the poop is allowed to circulate. So you are breeding the ultimate virus that one day will adapt well to the animals that are there, that one day will adapt to the humans that keeps coming in contact. One day the right mutation will happen where the receptor fits nicely well into the humans and in turn allow person-to-person -person transfer. But exactly which animal and what was the reservoir and so on and so forth, of course that will take some time for us to get to know. It took a while for us to figure that out for SARS as well. China has since banned the popular wildlife trade until the health crisis is over. There are also increasing calls from the international scientific community for the ban to be made permanent. I think that is to some extent what happened after SARS. Because look at the, 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 the wildlife trading. You know, if more things were done back 7, 15 plus or 17 years ago, maybe, uh, anyway, don't, we can't turn the clock back. Men and these animals, we are not meant to be living side by side. Viruses like this exist in wildlife. You put the situation of man and wildlife together in this kind of situations for a protracted period of time, these things can happen. And I think, you know, we are just tempting fate. It appears that so long as humans interact in close proximity with animals, future outbreaks of infectious diseases are likely to occur. Now, as we croach into the animal kingdom, being a Chinese, we have a terrible habit. We tend to eat anything that flies, swims or crawls. And when we bring these animals into our dinner table, we bring the viruses over along as well. Perhaps you, as the diner, will not need to see it because they'll be destroyed by the cooking. But the chef in preparation, the animal handler, the market that has to look after all these animals, will invariably be exposed to the virus. And we saw that in SARS 2003. In 2003, they realized that the animal handlers encountered a form of SARS, a variant of SARS, before the original one came along, such that they developed immunity to SARS. And one way to counter this is what the Chinese government has done. It stopped exotic animals from being onto the dining table. Perhaps we need to relook at what we eat. Outbreaks like MERS, SARS, Ebola, bird flu, and now this new Wuhan virus shows just how vulnerable human hosts are. So, what needs to change in our human interaction with nature's creatures, great and small?